welcome friends i am agit kasin and in this video what i'm going to show you is how to threshold a video using opencv and then further how to optimize the threshold values using track bars okay make sure you check out the description below this video as i have laid down all the reference links you might need in case you do not understand fully what i am doing over here so I expect you have a basic knowledge of HSV color model that is U, saturation and value. Uh, in case you don't have, don't worry, just Google it HSV color palettes and play with it for a while and you will soon observe and understand the analogous uh, nature of it with the RGB color model. Okay guys, let's begin. So first of all, what I'm going to need is the CV2 library. I'm going to import it. Along with it, I will also import the NumPy library as NP. Then moving on, I will capture the video using the inbuilt function of CV2 library video capture into the variable cap. Between the double inverted codes, what I'm going to place is the address of the or the di directory in which my video lies. So I will place the relative path over there. And now the routine stuff that is success comma frame equal to cap dot read now i will start with the while loop uh, the infinite loop so while true uh, i'll just rewrite the above success comma frame line it's just my style it's completely not necessary to write success comma frame equal to cap dot read before the while loop but anyways i do it moving on i will create the hsv color model so for this i will use cvt convert color uh, function of the cv2 library uh, frame comma cv2 dot color capital blue green red to hue saturation and value okay uh, over here i'll just quickly put another line that is i will uh, resize the frame variable uh, so frame value basically contains the frame uh, size, the frame in which the video will play. So what I will do is resize it uh, using frame dot resize. I want to resize what the frame variable, and the new frame will be 640 comma 480, which is inserted as a tuple, and it will be reassigned to the frame variable. Moving on, I am going to create. A the lower variable and uh, upper variable which will nothing which will be nothing but an array and it is better to use numpy for array so over here in the array i will uh, just enter some random values uh, we will optimize it later on and upper this lower and upper are nothing but the range in which i want to detect the colors so you know 0 to 255 is the range for rgb uh, any component RGB here in any case it is HSV hue saturation and value so I will now apply the mask so I will store the mask in a mask variable cv2 dot in range is the function I'm going to use so HSV is the frame that I'm going to pass and then lower and upper are the bounds so any color which lies in range of the two array lower and upper containing the HSV corresponding values will be detected as white. Everything else will be undetected by the Python code or OpenCV library. Uh, moving on is the result variable which will do nothing but apply the mask to the original frame of video. Now the only thing we are left are uh, with two show the video frame or display the video frame or uh, on the screen so for that we have cv2 dot i am show function of the uh, cv2 library so name of the frame that will be shown on the screen the first frame should be frame and what it should show is the content inside the frame variable i also want to show the mask frame so i will name it mask and comma mask variable over there then cv2 dot i am show this time mm -hmm. i think result comma so its name should be displayed as its result and it should show the result variable uh, let me put one more here 
CB2 dot I am show. Uh, let's for it's just not necessary, but I, anyways, I'm going to show the HSV frame also. So HSV will be the name of the window displayed, and it will display the HSV. The only thing we are left with is to break the loop. So let's create a key, a key variable that is CB2 dot wait key uh, one, and if the key is equal to equal to let's say 27, uh, that is the corresponding key escape so when I will press escape it will break the loop let's run the program so the output that we have is the result frame on top the mask frame and then the HSV frame and at the bottom we have the original frame so you can see that the thresholding our random thresholding is working quite well it should not have been working so well but anyways there are obstacles and we want to optimize it so to do that, we will use track bars. So moving back to the Visual Studio Code Editor, what I'm going to do is add a few lines of codes to optimize or create a window that will have track bars, which will help us to mechanically or just using software, optimize the threshold values. So first of all, I will create a window using cbdo.named window. I will name that window as track bars. After that, I will do I will use the create track bars function of CV2 library, and it will have its argument as L space H as a string that is lower hue H lower H value. Track bars is the window in which I'm going to add it. Then uh, inverted comma should be over here. So 0 and 2, 255 are the range in which I want to have a track bar. Um, nothing is a function that I will create over here. Wait a second. Uh, it is a function that takes x as an argument and practically does nothing for now. So I will pass it. Now I will copy this line and paste it 6 times. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I will quickly rename it lower edge, lower s. Remember we are doing HSV, so lower V, HSV and upper V, upper S, upper H. Now we have track bars ready. What we need to do is connect the output of the track bars to the input of a thresholding. That is all the code lying inside the while loop. So I will create a variable, let's say lay underscore H and I will connect the output of the create track bar uh, using the get track bar position get track bar pose and it will connect the output of the track bar which is named l space under dash space h and which is under the track bars window now i will quickly copy paste it six times connecting the output of every single created taskbar to a separate variable so i am going to quickly rename the variables on the left hand side over here and moving on what I will do is rename the track bar names so over here this should be L lower s lower v upper v, s upper v okay so what I will do next is insert the freshly created variables in or replace the uh, integers in the array lower and upper uh, with the freshly created variables with these arrays are going to be further an input to the in range function which will basically create our mask so now what I, what the mask will take is these arrays and what these arrays will take is the output from the taskbar so it's not that complicated but we are creating a great connection between the different input and outputs that we are dealing with on our uh, simple program so upper v upper s and upper h uh, i forgot to rename them as upper over here and i think we are done but there is something i think is wrong and uh, that's okay over here i have not done upper as the rename of the track bars so now we are done let's run the code or program and let's see if it works okay over here we have the result frame as previous as earlier 
and here we have mask frame hsv frame the original frame is over there at the bottom uh, let me move it a little bit so can that we can see the track bar and there we have the track bar and um, it is going to make life a hell lot easier we will quickly now see it so what i'm going to do is maximize all the upper values and now i will do the thresholding using the lower limits so let's do with start with h so you can see the mask is adapting and the result is also adapting to the track bar inputs because we are changing the lower limits and that will basically change the in range function input and thus the mask so pretty much done over here thank you for watching this video and have a great day